over the last couple of months, we spoke about intermittent fasting. We spoke about raw fasting and being on raw food right up till lunchtime. <clears throat> and over 50 to 60,000 people around the world have participated in all of the intermittent fasts that we've done. A lot of them report fantastic health changes. A lot of them report a change in their immunity, weight loss, everything when it's done the right way. Today, I want to introduce you to a new way of fasting. It's not new. It's existed for decades and decades in civilization. But you see, when we get used to things, if we want to see positive changes in our body, if we want to see positive changes in our health, we need to keep doing different things that matter to our body, the environment that we live in, and the ailments that we may have. Or some of us may simply be focused on prevention because prevention is better than cure. We want to prevent disease as much as we can. Today we live in a country, I'm talking specifically India, where we are the diabetic capital of the, of the, of the world. Cancer has become an epidemic. Everyone knows someone or has someone suffering from cancer and cardiovascular diseases. This isn't funny anymore. It's not only a drain on the economy, it's a drain on personal families' financial plans. It causes pain and suffering to the loved ones of people who are going through it, as well as suffering through the person going through the same you know, ailment. So everyone's talking about different remedies and what we should do to overcome sickness and to heal. That's great, but we need to start focusing on prevention. We need to start doing little things that we can, and that's part of the whole Reset 2018 Health Project, where we're going to help people inculcate lifestyle changes, inexpensive and free lifestyle changes that don't require you to spend any of your hard-earned money in preventing the onset of disease. So to start with today, it's about two days before New Year. Today we're on the 29th. We have the 30th and then we have the 31st. We're not going to be dieting on the 31st. But between today and tomorrow, if you're up for it, we can engage ourselves in something called dry fasting. Now, dry fasting has existed for decades. The Muslims practice it every year for a month. A lot of them do it the right way, but most of them do it the wrong way in terms of breaking the fast. Well, today we're going to understand exactly how dry fasting is extremely beneficial when it comes to boosting your immunity, reducing inflammation, which is the root cause of most diseases like cancer, cardiovascular problems, and even diabetes and the inability to lose weight. We're talking about purifying your blood. We're talking about purifying and clearing your blood vessels. We're talking about cleaning your entire gastrointestinal tract and replenishing all of your good bacteria so that you have proper digestion. You re reduce your acidity, re you reduce your bloating, flatulence, and all of these things. Yep. It's one method, one wellness technique that people have practiced for years and years before, and we've lost that ability to do it today because we have vitamins, we have supplements, we have fad diets, we have fad exercise pro uh, uh, programs, and we have all of these so-called nutritional programs that we believe will make us better. But sometimes the simplest thing, using the intelligence and brilliance of the human body, it's built in us, it's built in our body to detoxify ourselves without having to constantly drink green juices and turmeric waters and all of those things. Those are great. I talk about them. They're great to assist us, okay? But we can't depend on them. We, we should never forget that the human body has its own intelligence and brilliance to detoxify itself and to heal. Now let's look at animals. What's the first thing that animals do when they're sick or they're wounded? They find a quite secluded place, their own sanctuary where they can heal and they do not drink water and they do not eat food. That's their natural instinct. And you'll actually see it in children if you observe them carefully and even adults. The moment we're sick or the moment we're hurt, the first thing that drops is our appetite. The intelligence of the human body to stop making us eat. That signal is given to us, but we live in a world where we think that we should eat more when we're sick. We try to force feed our children more food when they're sick, thinking that it'll help them heal faster. Out of, out of sympathy, we feel sorry for ourselves and we tend to eat the, the worst food when we're healing. I mean, there's no wonder that diabetes is massive in India because every diabetic patient in every hospital has been given white bread and, you know, white food to eat when they're in hospital for diabetes. It's ridiculous. But let's, let's talk about dry fasting today and go back to animals. The natural instinct when we're sick is to stop eating food. And if you can do that, you will start healing. You will enable your own body's healing mechanism to protect you. So we lose appetite. Why does that happen? Because to heal you, your immune system requires a lot of energy. 
each of your white blood cells, your neutrophils, your leukocytes, your lymphocytes require energy so that they can start fighting out the germs, the pathogens, handle the tumor, the cysts, the fibroids that are growing in your body. Now that energy is not going to come from the food that your doctor or your nutritionist constantly tells you to keep eating. We have to understand that. We, eat, we give you food because the nutrients from the food that you eat needs, needs to reach your cells and boost your, boost your immunity. But energy, that energy that your immunity uh, requires comes from fasting. That comes from not eating too much of food because your digestive system utilizes almost 75 to 80 percent of the you of the human body's energy now that energy can be used for healing but if we constantly eat every two hours or three hours or we're force feeding ourselves when we're sick that same energy that is required for healing is now being used for digestion and that's why fasting whether it is water fasting whether it is dry fasting is extremely extremely beneficial for your healing. And when I travel to Mexico and we go to some of these fasting incubators where cancer patients or patients with terminal diseases are kept to fast for four days, eight days, nine days, in sanctuaries where they're not exposed to food, where it's supervised, their blood pressure, their blood sugar levels, their vitals are supervised and they eat nothing and they drink nothing. The healing is miraculous. Anyway, we're going to be realistic and talk about how we can drive fast in our own environment, in our own country, in our own homes. So number one, how does dry fasting work? Okay, now when you water fast, what happens is you don't, drink, you don't eat food, but you only drink water. So a lot of toxins from your cells, your urine, your liver, your kidneys, uh, your bowels, your colon is flushed out with water. Now, not all of it goes away, but when you water fast for a longer period of time, you feel lighter, you feel more energetic. Now, with dry fasting, there's a beautiful process that happens in the human body. There's no water going into your system. Your cells actually become incinerators. The, tox the toxins start getting burnt up by every cell. There is no water going in during a dry fast. There is no food and there is no water. So your cells start incinerating all of the toxins in every cell of your body. So what we need to understand that there are two kinds of dry fasting. There is soft dry fasting where you can have a bath, you can brush your teeth and you have no food and you have no water and then there is hard dry fasting where you don't even expose your body to water because your skin absorbs water as well. That's an extreme but today we're going to start off with soft fasting which is very very simple to do. So number one, let's understand your body has the ability to self-generate and self-rejuvenate cells. This is directed by something called a stem cell. Now, all of us have stem cells. So, for example, babies have one stem cell to every 10,000 cells in the human body approximately. Now, as we age, these stem cells reduce. So, an adult over the age of 40 years may have one stem cell to 500,000 cells approximately. Now, stem cells are extremely important for us, which is why a lot of us today hear about stem cell treatment for burn victims, for cancer patients, for brain disorders like Alzheimer's and a lot of other issues because that one stem cell, why is stem, cells, stem cell treatment so important? Because one stem cell can rejuvenate and regenerate thousands of other healthy cells and we all know that we are made up of cells. So we either have healthy cells or we have unhealthy cells and that determines the way we look, our face, our skin, our hair, our immunity, our weight, our hormonal balance, the inflammation in our body, every possible disease is connected to every cell that you have in your body. So the more healthy stem cells you have, the more cells you have. Now what happens when you dry fast? When you dry fast, you incinerate toxins in your cells, which means you actually kill a lot of the dead cells and pass them out of your system. This creates spaces between your cells and these spaces allow new stem cells to fill the vacated cells. So what happens is you're able to actually produce more stem cells which will further reju rejuvenate and regenerate new healthy cells. And that's exactly what needs to happen in the human body. So people who have cysts, people who have fibroids, people who have benign tumors and even, even toxic and malignant tumors, what happens is when you dry fast you are able to actually start breaking down these cysts and these fibroids and these tumors through a, pro a process called autolysis which is a process where the body sacrifices the sickest cells in, its bo in your body for survival. So when you go through dry fasting, your body is actually sacrificing the sickest cells in your body to help you survive. 
So what happens is uh, the second point that I want to talk about is, yeah, the old cells and the sick cells. We're full of old cells and sick cells all the time because every second your body's creating new cells and there are cells that are dying. But we never go through a process of removing all of these dead cells and toxic cells from our body. Water fasting can do that, but dry fasting can do that more effectively. Now, we talk about inflammation all the time, which is the root cause of most diseases, be it cancer, cardiovascular, strokes, diabetes. It's all inflammation. Now, inflammation cannot happen in a body which doesn't have water. So what happens is when you dry fast, your body is forced to use water from your cells, from cells, you know, fat cells, from toxic cells, from inflamed cells, and that's how inflammation actually starts reducing when you start dry fasting. Parasites, pathogens, germs, all of these get incinerated when you go through the process of dry fasting. It's extremely effective for you to detoxify your gut, which has a lot of parasites, a lot of germs, and a lot of microbes as well, which are not supposed to be in your gut. So when we dry fast, you allow your body to naturally clean yourself of all of these things. Okay, so what happens when you dry fast then? Where do we get water from? Your cells are deprived of water, but while we breathe, we take in atmospheric water, we take in carbon dioxide, and we take in nitrogen while we are dry fasting. And your body also starts generating a new set of amino acids, which helps you build healthier cells and a stronger immunity. So how do you break a dry fast? Let's talk about how you do it in the first place. So for example, today where I am, it's currently 6 in the evening. So if I'm going to have my dinner at 6.30 and I finish by 7, I'm going, to start, I'm going to try to keep 16 hours of gap of not eating any food and not drinking any water. It's the same as the intermittent fast where we don't eat any food for 16 hours, but we drink water. Now what we're doing is we're not going to drink water and we're not going to eat any food. Now, I've done this myself, and I can, can't tell you it was the best feeling of my life. After 16 hours, I was full of energy. I wasn't craving water. I wasn't craving food. I went on for 24 hours. I was still good. I went on for 36 hours, full energy, doing my workouts, consulting with my patients, traveling. No water, no food. It's unbelievable. If you want to experience what I experience, you've got to try it. Because once you do it, you realize that you have the power to dry fast. When you know that you have the power to do it, you can do it anytime. When you're sick, when you're not sick, when you want to detoxify, post-New Year, you can plan to dry fast once every week, once every two weeks, just to help your body rejuvenate. Because it's through the process of dry fasting that it becomes highly anti-aging. Why? There is, no such, there is no such thing as anti-aging. There's no magic pill or magic cream that will make you look younger over a longer period of time. The only thing that can prolong your life and help you look young and feel young, it's not about just looking young. There are so many youngsters out there who look so young today, but they're lazy, they're lethargic, they want to play video games all day, they want to sit in front of the TV all day. They have no energy to go out and play, they have no energy to do anything. That's because they may look young, but it doesn't mean that their body's not aging. Anti-aging is when you can reduce the accumulation of toxins in the human body. So the faster you help your body reduce toxins and eliminate toxins, the younger you are, which means you're living your full lifespan in a healthy way, in a youthful way, without actually, you know, basically uh, degenerating. So it is possible for all of us and even senior citizens and the elderly watching this right now. Yep, you may be aging, you may have wrinkles, you may look older than you look 10 years down 10 years before, that's, that's life, that's what aging is. But you can feel younger, you can start healing, you can feel more energetic. And I know so many people, so many of the elderly people today who have more energy than the youth. It's because they maintain their diets, they don't eat all the junk food that the youth eat today. They have balance in their exercise and their food, their sleep and their stress levels. And that's something that we have to learn from that generation, how to take it easy, how not to stress over small things, how not to overeat. They may eat everything, but they don't overeat and how to make sure that they get a, they get a good night's rest. So coming to dry fasting, you may want to take up the challenge right, day, right now today. I'm going to do it today, just before New Year, and make it a part of my lifestyle every single week if I can, or at least every 10 days or 14 days in 2018. So you finish your dinner, and then you don't eat food and you don't drink water for at least 14 to 16 hours. Now, if you get it right for 12 hours, that's great. The next time you can take it to 14 hours, and the next time you will automatically take it to 16 hours or 36 hours. So I'll tell you exactly what I felt when I did the fast. 
I felt a little thirsty towards bedtime. You know, you felt like drinking water. It was more out of habit. It wasn't troublesome. I slept beautifully throughout the night. I didn't wake up feeling thirsty. I didn't wake up feeling hungry. I woke up in the morning, a slight hunger pang because of my habit of having breakfast. That passed quickly. I wasn't thirsty. I wasn't battling any of my thirst cravings right up till lunchtime, right up till the next day, right up till 36 hours. The energy that you get, the power that you feel is incredible. And you will only understand this when you do it. Now, for people going through medication, people going through kidney problems and all, you want to check with your doctors or your nutritionists or your, or your medical professionals before doing this because I have no idea what your levels of potassium are, what your levels of sodium are, or what kind of sickness that you do have, what you may have. People who have cancer, I cannot express how beneficial this is for you. But again, there's a time to do it. You want to be eating the right food while you're going through chemotherapy and radiation because your body needs nutrients to recover. But post-chemo and radiation, if it's calculated the right way and you're supervised the right way, okay? So you may want to really look at doing this because it can remove the effects of chemotherapy and radiation as well because it's incinerating all of the toxins that radiation and chemotherapy puts into you. It's not only, it's not only about handling the side effects of your treatment. It's about boosting your immune system. Dry fasting is one of the most powerful tools when it comes to stimulating your immune system, when it comes to stimulating your anti-inflammatory mechanism in the human body. If you can reduce inflammation in your body, you're going to feel better, you're going to look younger, you're going to live longer. It purifies your blood. You need pure blood going to all of your cells to boost your immunity. It cleans out your blood vessels for all the people who have cholesterol, triglycerides, inflammation, blockages in your arteries. This is one of the best ways to clean out your blood vessels and of course, digestive issues, like I mentioned, almost one in two people have digestive disorders, acidity, bloating, flatulence, improper microbial, you know, uh, gut colonies in your system. So dry fasting is a fantastic way of cleaning out your gut completely and resetting it. The, the word is reset. All of us have that reset button in us. We wake up every day. All we need to do is hit that reset button and make sure that that lifestyle changes, those lifestyle changes happen in our life. So again, I'm going to repeat the, the way to do a dry fast, extremely simple. Finish your dinner today. Have a light dinner. You don't have a very heavy dinner. And dry fast. If you get 12 hours, that's great. Make it 14 the next time and then 16 and then the sky's the limit. You can go up for about three days. Now, if you do it for three days or even 24 hours, you don't want to do it all the time. So if you've done a two-day fast, you want to recover for four days, which means you do it for two days of fasting, you eat for four days. There's also a dry fasting method called the cascading effect where you dry fast for one day, you eat for one day. You dry fast for one day, you eat for another day. Now, this is inexpensive. This is free. The only thing stopping you is your own fear. It's your own fear of can I do it or can I not do it? What stops you from trying? The worst that's going to happen is you break it. That's the worst that's going to happen. Okay, so before all your fears in your mind get the better of you, just decide to start doing it right now, right today, if you can, before the new year. Because I can promise you, it's the easiest thing to do. And once you do it, you can do it whenever you have to. You have that one drug which can prevent and heal in your hands. And you know you're capable of doing it. You don't have to wait to fall sick and then think, oh, I'm sick and now I have to drive fast. I can't do it. And yep, there'll be a lot of people that tell you, oh, you're sick. You need energy. That energy comes from your body. Energy doesn't just come from food. Energy comes from our body when we're cleaned of toxins, when we direct energy from our digestive system to every other cell in the human body. So it's a myth that you've got to eat more for more energy. Sometimes eating less gives you more energy automatically. So you may want to try this. Let me know if you need any help. So I'm opening up the challenge right now to everyone. For the next 16 to 18 hours, we're going to dry fast. If you're in, send us a message and we'll help you right through the fast. Have a good evening, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. Hang on, I made notes. I want to make sure I've not missed out any point. I think we're good. So try dry fasting. It's going to change your life. Have a good day, everyone.